Tavis, you can't allow this. Eveline could barely make out the words as they passed her mother's lips. Her face was tear-stained. All over a wedding? Eveline frowned. None of this made sense. Tavis put a restraining hand on his wife's arm and then turned just enough that Eveline could see him angrily bite out to her brother Aidan, Take your mother away from here. Robina Armstrong shook her head fiercely, resisting Aidan's grip. This is madness. He can't feed her to the wolves that way. Tis not right. She's not able to perform her marriage duties. This is Travis the Tavis. It cannot be allowed to stand. An uneasy sensation prickled down Eveline's spine. She was starting to have a very bad feeling about just what had her family in such an uproar. Wedding? Her mother in tears? Unable to perform marriage duties? Feeding to the wolves? Who were the wolves? The king's messenger frowned, obviously not liking the hostile environment he'd landed himself in. The king has decreed it so. Graham Montgomery and Eveline Armstrong will marry. Eveline clamped a hand over her mouth, even though she hadn't said a word in well over three years. The reaction was automatic, to quiet the silent cry that billowed up from her very soul. She whirled around, not wanting to witness any more. She fled the keep, nearly tripping down the stone steps in her haste. Gathering her skirts in tight fists, she ran over the uneven terrain behind the keep and into the grove of trees lining a stream that fed a nearby lock. Instinctively, she sought out the large boulder that jutted out over the water. There, the stream ran faster, bubbling over larger stones and rocks. She imagined the sound, holding it like a fleeting memory. It had been so long since she'd last heard anything that the memories of sound were fading. She mourned that loss. Before she could sit on her rock and remember the gurgling sounds, the rush of the water and the peace it brought her. Over time, those phantom sounds faded into nothing, a blank void she felt herself slipping further into all the time. Hunching her knees up so she could rest her chin atop them, she closed her eyes, but then quickly opened them. A world without sound and sight frightened her. Married. Betrothal was what had wrought the deception she'd maintained for the last three years. Tragedy had befallen her, but it had also rescued her from an unwanted marriage, a marriage her father had been determined to make happen. How was it possible? Panic clawed at her throat at the idea of leaving her sanctuary. She was loved here, cherished. No one thought ill of her, or at least no one dared to voice such an opinion aloud. Her father would spit the person on his sword who disparaged his only daughter in any way. But she knew what they said behind her back, some of the more unkindly ones, or rather, not to her back, but in her sight. Daft, mad, touched, poor lass, never a use to anyone. They were wrong, but she wouldn't correct them. It was too dangerous to do so, 